You spend the last night collecting data on a beautiful target. Your PC overheated, combining all the data. And now it's finally time to turn this stacked image into a piece of art. But how can we achieve this amazing, stunning and jaw-dropping, almost 3D looking effect that hits us every time when we scroll through the most famous Instagram pages? Let me explain how to fine-tune your editing for both Photoshop and PixInsight to take your astrophotography to the next level with 5-way contrast. My name's Tim and this is Astro Addict. Since I recently got myself pics insight, I researched countless techniques, read articles and books, searched websites, not only to learn the software, but to achieve a better editing result in general. The following techniques are mostly derived from this book, but they can easily be used in Photoshop as well, adapting them to its surface. Note that there is no basic recipe that you can apply to every image. Fine-tuning, experimenting, comparing before and after are the main key ingredients to get yourself satisfied with your images. I call this technique 5-way contrast. 5 easy steps to make your subject stand out, to lift it off the background and out of the countless dull and flat astro images out there. These 5 steps are composition, brightness, contrast, sharpness and saturation. Even though they sound different, they are closely related. Let's take a closer look at what contrast actually means. In its most basic form, contrast is the difference in luminance in an image. The luminance channel is the most important channel in your images, contributing all the data and signal. A strong contrast lifts the object of the background, compressing the histogram and increasing the difference between black and white. A weak contrast, on the other hand, expands the histogram, adding more space between black and white, adding a huge variety of boring grey. Increasing contrast in all of these five ways gets your image right. Andromeda Galaxy is a beautiful target, especially up close. If galaxies or nebulae fill the entire field of view, they are simply too much bright nebulosity and an absence of dark background sky. On the other hand, the Whirlpool Galaxy will look quite underwhelming when it has the size of a dust spot. Choose an object that is a good fit for your system and take control over position and camera rotation, including or excluding structures that could add potential adversity or harm the final image by adding too much light. Good targets for short and wide focal lengths, maybe between 300 and 500 millimeters, are the large nebulae in Cygnus, Andromeda Galaxy and the Pleiades. These can be photographed without the use of auto guiding and contain a large variety of dark and bright areas. Medium-sized focal lengths from 600 to 900 mm can easily be directed towards face-on galaxies and most of the other known Messier objects. With a reasonable size, they can stand out by themselves out of the dark background. And a large reflecting telescope could either scan the molecules in your iris or take a closer look at the hearts of nebulae, the small galaxies in Leo or small supernova remnants like the Bubble Nebula, for example. If you have enough space and less distortion in the edges, consider placing the object on thirds, making them more appealing to the human eye. The basic photography rules still apply here. Now we enter the actual editing phase. At this point, it's important to know what linear image actually means. When an image is in its linear state, every pixel corresponds directly to the number of photons received. The brightness levels of the objects retain their original relationship. To see anything, the non-linear stretch is applied. It raises the midtones, leveling the highlights and moves the black point further in. This new distribution was not proportionate and therefore non-linear. I assume you already know how to stretch images, because the brightness edit is applied after the non-linear stretch. If you work with Deep Sky Stacker in Photoshop, these steps already happened. You stretch the image to your liking, but does the background still look too bright? In PixInsight, grab the histogram transformation tool, zoom in a little bit and take the black point further in. In Photoshop, apply a levels adjustment layer and adjust the black point of each color channel to a sample on the background. A value between 19 and 30 will be okay. This step is part of a basic editing workflow. Do not skip it, because the next part will rely on it. Our subject is bright enough, separated from the background. But does it still look flat and dull? Let's apply some controlled and selective contrast. In PixInsight, open the Curves Transformation tool and apply the basic S-curve to the luminance channel. 
Lower the darks, increase the midtones and level the highlights to avoid saturated stars. After that, open the local histogram equalization tool. The kernel radius dictates how much of the surrounding area of a pixel will be used for the evaluation. Lower values will create a stronger result. Higher ones will weaken the effect. The contrast limit sets the applied contrast. 1 will change nothing, 2 will double it. You may find that 1.5 will be okay. The result dictates how much of the result will be blended with the original image to create a more natural look. Feel free to experiment. In Photoshop we have this wonderful tool called Local Contrast Enhancement. It's basically the same as the Pixinsights LHE tool. Be sure to apply a mask protecting the stars in the background sky. After the action is applied you can press undo and the layer will appear. You can change its opacity to weaken the effect and get a more natural look. If you don't have the action set, use the same mask and apply an S-curve to your object. Continue the trimming until you are happy with the result. This is the most critical step to get this 3D feeling in your image. Sharpness is nothing else but local contrast and can be split up into resolution and acutance. Unless you have undersampled stars, you can't do anything about your resolution. It is bound to your equipment and seeing conditions. If undersampled, you can use a drizzle integration to upscale your image and to add the missing pixels. For more information on drizzling, I recommend the tutorial from Dylan O'Donnell, link in the description. Acutance, on the other hand, describes the contrast along the edges of objects, making them look more defined. In Pixinsight, create a mask, protecting the stars and the background, using the range selection, star mask and pixel math. Clean up remaining bright stars with the Cologne Stamp tool and apply the mask. Next we open this magical tool called Multiscale Linear Transformation. The algorithm is Starlight Transform with 4 layers. Apply some bias to layers 2 and 3 and a lesser amount to layer 4. If you encounter artifacts, use the least amount of de-ringing that gets rid of them. In Photoshop use the same mask and refine it with the selected mask tool. You want to work on the subject only and avoid sharpening the stars and the noisy background. To avoid strange artifacts around the edges, get some feathering in there. Apply unsharp mask to the image and keep experimenting until you like the result. In order not to sharpen the color noise, be sure to work on the luminance channel only. Saturation is nothing else but contrast in color. It is possibly the most eye-catching effect, but can easily be overdone. You could get yourself the saturation tool and just go. But if you want to achieve a natural look, take it slow. This step does not have to be at the end of the processing, since the steps before it were applied on the luminance channel only. It is a good idea to add a tiny bit of color boost after the initial stretch and seeing it grow during the processing. In Pixinsight, again open the Curves Transformation tool, choose the S or C channel and again apply a small S-curve. But these same settings would be applied to the background, right? This would decrease the color contrast between the object and the background. So be sure to protect the dark areas with a mask. You may have realized by now that masking is an essential skill that you have to be capable of. After the curves you can open the color saturation tool and just go wild with the options. Selectively boost the colors you want, decrease the colors you don't want, or rotate the hue to create entirely new patterns. Experimentation is key. In Photoshop the same rules apply. The curves adjustment layer acts the same as in Pixinsight. And the saturation layer is very easy to use. Use a mask to protect the background and the stars and slowly work your way with small color contrast boosts. These are usually the last steps in the entire processing. Possibilities in Pixinsight. Use the Dark Structure Enhance script to lift your object even more and reduce the stars to guide the attention to the object of your choice. Grab yourself a star mask, apply some morphological transformation and watch the stars getting smaller and smaller. Again, multiple small adjustments are better than one big punch. And in Photoshop you can do the same. Create a star mask and apply the minimum filter found in the Filter Other submenu. Small adjustments work way better. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and maybe you even learned something new. Feel free to add comments and feedback down below. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing to get astrophotography vlogs, tutorials and inspiration about the most amazing hobby there is, deep sky astrophotography. Remember, don't edit images like the others wanted. Edit them until you are happy. Clear skies and may the night be with us.